Hey, everybody. Welcome to day 19 of the 21 Day Greater Challenge. I laugh because I can't believe we're at day 19. Um, I have this, for lack of a better term, I've tried to find it all day. I can't find a better term. Um, I know it's excitement. Um, maybe I just better leave it at excitement. <laughs> I want to call it nervous. Um, there, but there's this ex excitement, this anticipation about what these next few days, these next few months, the next few years even holds for us. Um, okay, before I go there, the greater challenge is all about um, thinking greater speaking greater and seeing greater okay um our obedience in thinking um expanding our minds taking the limits off uh changing any faulty belief systems um that's in the thinking part so we've been challenged to think greater and then we need to speak greater we need to release some things in the atmosphere it's so easy for us to um say negative things to come out, of, come out of our mouths wrong and just spout out how we're feeling. And we're, for some reason, just human nature, we're more likely to say something negative than positive. You know, we can have a positive thought and keep it to ourselves, have a negative thought and just spout it out. We could before this 21 day challenge. So this thing is causing us to speak life now, um, to open our mouths and bring some things, um, come into agreement with what God has said. And then he said that the manifestations on him. So one plants, one waters, God gives the increase. He's going to do it. And, and he said that there was um, exponential growth. And not only exponential growth, but he said um, that he had released acceleration, that the spirit of acceleration had been released. And so, yeah, it's just been a lot of good stuff going on. If you've missed the days leading up to this, I encourage you to go back and look at them because God has said a lot to us. Um, and I'm just grateful that he's talking. So today, um, what's been on my heart is about obedience, obedience, obedience. Um, and the first thing that came to mind was obedience is greater than sacrifice. So many times we give God what we want him to have, um, what we think, we, but mm -mm. just do what he says. <laughs> Just do what he says. That's what he wants. Just do what he says. God is not a God that makes us guess and figure what he wants. If we ask him what he wants, he will tell us. Then it's up to us to obey. So um, I heard Bishop Jakes say that when God gives an order, he expects you to obey. He said, stop telling God how you feel about it. And just do it the way God said, do it. <laughs> Ouch. He said that we've lost discipline and structure. And then we wonder why we're not prospering. But God, but we cannot prosper in disobedience. Yeah. Um, when God gives instructions, y'all, we have to obey them to the letter. Obey them to the letter. That's how Saul lost the kingdom. God gave specific instructions for what he was supposed to do. And he did them to a degree, but he did not do them completely. Um, he brought, he, like he was supposed to kill everything, everybody, like everything. And he killed like all but the king. Um, he kept, some of the choice goats and the choice, um, I've forgotten what all, but, and they wanted to sacrifice them to God. God don't want that stuff. <laughs> he told you to kill it. 
But then we want to give God what we want him to have. That's not even what he wants. So, and that's when the whole thing, the, the scripture, uh, 1 Samuel 15, 35. To obey is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Yeah, so um, the same thing got Cain and Abel in trouble. Like, just do it the way I tell you to do it. This is not a competition. You don't have to be mad at the next person because they're getting certain thing that you're not getting. Follow the pattern for you. Um, I've heard Bishop Presley say, because y'all, so many times, it's not enough to do some of what God says and then do the rest in what we want or what's convenient. Bishop Presley always says, half obedience is disobedience. So doing a thing partially correct is doing it incorrect. It's doing it incorrect. Um, Proverbs 3 has been on me again all day today. Even when I didn't know it was Proverbs 3. When I'd end up looking up scripture, it was Proverbs 3. So I'd really encourage y'all read Proverbs 3. It's some wisdom dropped in that scripture. Do you hear me? And I know that that's one of the foundational things that God has for me. And so I've got to study it. I, I did study it weeks ago, but by some of my missteps, I'm not studying it enough. And I just, I feel like for each of us, because God knows how we are shaped up. He knows our, uh, our struggles. He knows our tendencies. He knows our mindsets, our, our thought processes. He knows our makeup. And so I believe there are certain scriptures that he will give us that sets parameters for us. And I know all, I know we're supposed to obey the whole scripture. That it, yes, undoubtedly, unquestionably. Okay. But I believe that there are certain guiding principles that he will give to you individually that it has to be the base. It has to be the go-to. It has to become your nature in order for you to manifest, in order for you to be successful, in order for you to fulfill purpose, in order for you to reach destiny. And so get quiet with God and find out those things that he like continually highlights. Like I said, there were things that was coming up in my spirit, things that were coming up in my spirit. And I was like, where is that? I'd look it up. Proverbs 3. What? It was some other scripture, something that was in my heart earlier. I, I'm writing. I look it up. Bam. It's something he told me a couple months ago. So you get quiet with God and find those scriptures that he needs you like cemented in. Some things that you cannot stray from. Y'all, I believe with everything in me. That God, I know, I don't, I don't just believe, I know that there are some things that God is telling us right now. He's telling us now at this stage of the game, he's getting it in us um, a lot of times through error. Not that he, make, he knows what we're going to do. And it's almost like through flopping, through falling on your face. You realize, okay, not my way. God, what you want me to do? Then when you learn the lesson, like sometimes there is no teacher like experience. It would be wonderful if we could read it and just, yep, mm hmm No, so many times, unfortunately, we have to experience it to believe, okay? Um, so just find out what those scriptures are that God has for you. Um, Proverbs 3, like I said, is one of mine. And something that the Lord said today, obedience, well, you know what I was writing. Um, obedience involves steps. And we cannot miss a step. 
if we have a specific expectation or a specific destination. Um, there are instructions inside the obedience that we must follow. So I can be told that I need to make a strawberry cake, okay? I could even see it in my mind's eye as a finished product. But if I don't follow the instructions, I won't get the intended product. I will not get it. So like today, God was showing me that there are doors inside the doors. So there are some doors uh, without a shadow of a doubt that God is swinging open before us, swinging open. We know that it's God. But once you step inside that door and there are other doors, it doesn't mean just go running in them all willy nilly. Okay. We can't just, oh, I'm in here now. No, 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 no. You got in that door, but you still need to ask God about every door after that. Um, we got to hear him about what's right for each of us. I'm even finding in that, like there may be some things that come about that my sister can do that I can't do or vice versa. We have to seek God for ourselves. Um, it's like I saw that door doesn't necessarily mean entry because every door this presented ain't your door, okay? Um, door means ask. That's what I got. Door does not equal entry. Door equals ask. God, I see this door is right here, but is this for me to go in? Because I want to be in your will. And if it's no, I don't care how beautiful it is. I don't care how much it seems like the answer to prayer. Stay out. Y'all, something, and I hope it fits in here. I hope y'all get what I'm saying. Um, I feel like part of the danger of seeing an end result is trying to make it happen. Being too anxious, believing that each thing is it. This, oh, God said, oh, this must be how. Bruh, chill, just chill. Like that's all we gotta do is relax in it. Like allow God to tell us what to do. He'll tell us we don't have to be anxious. We should not be anxious. He will tell us. God is very clear. He's very clear. And if he ain't talking, be still until it's clear because God speaks. Okay. Um, our obedience requires us to have convictions and then to stand by those convictions. I started looking at scriptures and, and different scriptures. Just anyone who loved John 14. 15, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. And I'm like, hmm? But the love is connected to the obedience. It's connected to the obedience. Um, I heard the Lord tell me that the rules he has for me are not for punishment, they're for promotion. <laughs> the rules that he sets up for me, they're not to punish me. They're to promote me because it keeps me in a place. It keeps me in check. Other people can do what I can't do, but other people can't go where I'm headed. God's convictions are specific for me. Okay. The convictions that he has given me, they're specific for me. Um, Isaiah 119 says, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat of the fruit of the land. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat of the fruit of the land. Then Psalm 14310 says, teach me to do your will for you are my God. 
Let your good spirit lead me on level ground. Teach me to do your will, God. Um, Y'all, we just have to humble ourselves. Realize like we don't know it. Humble ourselves and ask God um, to teach us to do his will. And his will is that obedience. Um, Second John verse uh, chapter one, verse six says, and this is love that we walk according to his commandments. And I'm like, how does that make sense? This is love that we walk according to his commandments. Like, how is it that we don't love him if we don't? And it's what came to me was, I love him enough to trust what he says. I feel like that love, that faith, they're so interconnected, faith being the trust. Um, and this is love that we walk according to his commandments. So I have to love him enough to trust him. And Joshua 22, five says, only be very careful to observe the commandment and the law that Moses, the servant of the Lord commanded you to love the Lord your God and to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and to cling to him and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. All means all. And so many times that's all like, one misstep, one left turn when you were supposed to go right. One keeping straight when he said make a right. One, even so far as when he says stop and we keep going. When he says go and we stop. Y'all, all of it, all, all of it matters. We are supposed to Consider him, acknowledge him in all our ways. I'll get to it. Hebrews 5, 8. No, now this one blew my mind. Y'all, it's some scripture that I've been reading that I know I read that I didn't read. Okay. I read it, but I didn't digest it. Hebrews 5, 8 says, although he, Jesus, although he was a son, he learned obedience from what he suffered. Huh? Although he was a son, he learned obedience from what he suffered. Shut your mouth and keep on talking. What? Jesus himself <laughs> learned obedience from what he suffered. That thing can, and, and suffered, like, I know we have variations of certain words or whatever, but oh my God, Jesus learned and grew. You know, even when it talks about him having been in the temple at 12 or, or like confounding the, the doctors and all those and the teachers and stuff. And it says something to the effect of um, like, when he left with his parents and like he made himself obedient or he humbled himself to become obedient to them or something of that nature. God himself in the flesh. God himself became obedient. How much more like he became. So that means like there were because he was all man. So he was tempted at times to do his own thing. I mean, even in the Garden of Gethsemane, like it was, Daddy, you showed us on the way. Now, this is what, this is such a side note, but I'm just throw it and move. I was like, did Jesus forget where he came from? Like, he was up in glory. Like, <laughs> you were up there. It was time for you to die. I mean, I know you ain't want all that. But remembering you was going back up there and you ain't want to die. It's like if there's any other way, 
if there is any other way. But it's like I heard the Holy Spirit say, you came from the same place. You came from the same place. What you doing? Okay, so anyway, y'all, we have to follow instructions step by step. That's crucial. It's really crucial. If someone's trying to get from here to Columbia, it wouldn't be enough to just say, okay, you go from I-520 to I-20. You'd have to say which direction, I-20 east, I-20 west, what's it going to be? You got to, there will be specifics. And y'all, there are sometimes we know where we're supposed to get to, but we don't ask the specifics or we are not still long enough to hear him say them. Um, obedience is doing it his way. It's not just enough to do it. God's way is made up of types and patterns. God is a planner. So to make it to a destination the way he instructs us, that determines what we see and what we go through. Some things we would have never had to endure, y'all. We would have never had to experience certain things if we just consulted God first. Okay. Um, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, that's my mama's favorite scripture, and it's becoming mine. <laughs> Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Wow. So I've been pondering that, and I mean, that's the scripture that whooped my tail today. Like in all your ways, acknowledge him, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Okay. So then I start hearing the scripture like that. Be not wise in your own eyes. And I'm like, where is that? I'd be doggone if it wasn't verse seven of the same chapter. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear Yahweh and depart from evil. For that to be connected Okay, first of all, because I ain't wise in my own eyes. I have no wisdom outside of God. The wisdom is to know that. To know you ain't, you don't know nothing. You don't know nothing. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Then there's a colon. That means, in other words, fear Yahweh and depart from evil. Thinking I can figure this thing out on my own leads me into crazy places. Okay. I'm almost finished, y'all. Um, Proverbs 14, 12 says, there is a way that seems right to man, but its end is the way to death. I looked that up in so, like, I looked that up in so many different versions because I'm like, its end is the way to death. Okay, it's got to be something besides death. Let me see what they say in this version. Let me see what, all of them, all of them, all of them ended just like that. Its end is the way to death. Some variation of that, but death was there. So I'm wondering, what have we killed with all our good intentions? There is a way that seems right to man, but its end is the way to death. How many relationships have died at our hands? How many opportunities have croaked because you were doing it? the way you thought was right. How many people have gotten messed up because you did what you thought was right? Yeah, yeah. There are so many things that we have caused death to simply because we didn't consult God. Ways, road, journey, manner, actions. Okay, ways. Definition, road, journey, manner, actions. Remember, um, acknowledge him in all your ways. Mm -hmm. There is a way that seems right to man. Job 23.10 says, he knows the way I take. And when he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. I just need to follow the instructions. He knows the way I take. And when he has tested me, I got to follow the instructions. 
I will come forth as gold. Okay, so here's my declaration for today. I am obedient. The steps of a righteous man are ordered. Now I just need to follow the orders. In all my ways, I acknowledge him and he directs my paths. That is the secret to my success. I acknowledge him, I hear him, and I obey him. This has been One Moment with Marcy. I'll be back tomorrow for another moment of momentum producing motivation. Stay encouraged and just remember, you got to flutter before you can fly. But flying is in your future. We got two more days, y'all.